Is the golf swing making your back pain worse? For many recreational golfers, the answer should be yes. That's because the golf swing is exactly what the spine doesn't want to do. It doesn't want to repeat high velocity asymmetrical rotations under compressive and shearing forces while placing the disc in compromised positions. Positions that make the disc less able to buffer the forces in a golf swing. And eventually, if you continue to do that over and over again, it leads to damage and injury and pain. Yet, so many recreational golfers continue to do this without realizing that they're creating damage to the disc by swinging a golf club over and over again for many years. There's no such thing as non-specific back pain. Back pain always has a root cause and there are trigger movements to the pain. And these trigger movements can actually cause the damage or cause the pain. Now for golfers with disc issues, unfortunately, one of the trigger movements is the golf swing. The key to healing is to temporarily remove the trigger movements and deal with the root cause of the pain. Then you can get back to playing golf without causing more damage and more pain. That's why I'm doing this series on spinal disc injuries and the golf swing. Because if you have disc issues that are causing pain, understanding why the golf swing causes damage and pain is the first step to healing. This is part three in the series, and in this video we're gonna go over why disc issues destabilize spinal joints and can lead to many of the injuries and pain that plague so many golfers. In parts one and two, we went over in more detail the components of a disc and mechanisms of injury. So if you'd like to check those out, go to the YouTube channel and you can watch those videos. Now, if you're not subscribed or you don't know how to find our YouTube channel, go to our website, golftraininghacks.com, go to the homepage, go to the bottom of the page and you'll see the YouTube link. Click on the link that'll get you to the YouTube channel and you can watch those videos. So let's get started with part three. The disc capacity to compress and pressurize makes them amazingly effective at limiting movement and buffering force when conditions are right. And even when conditions aren't right and the discs aren't really in the best position to do that, they still let us bend, flex, extend, rotate, twist, pick heavy things off the floor and create power. That's why the discs are relatively good at letting us play golf for a long time without feeling anything. But here's the problem. The golf swing is so tough on the discs even when conditions are right, even under the best of circumstances. Even when you have great posture during the swing, great technique in that fluid effortless swing, micro traumas still build up in the walls of the disc that create damage. Repeating the submaximal loading, one-way repetition with side bending of the golf swing over and over again delaminates the collagen walls of the disc and that creates damage. Now, Postural dysfunctions that take you out of that neutral spine position during your golf swing creates even more damage. Now add things in everyday life that can create damage to the discs and that all adds up to you feeling something and what you feel is pain. When the collagen layers of the disc wall are delaminated, a few things happen and none of them are good. So when you have a solid disc wall, when that adherence of all those layers is tight, when you pressurize the disc with compression, the wall bulges out evenly. It, it's nice and stiff. It bulges out like this and it becomes a very stiff wall that can limit movement and buffer force. When the wall's layers are delaminated, they separate. So as you compress those layers and they loosen, they're gonna separate even more. And that makes them a little bit squishy and sloppy, just like a car tire. If you deflate a car tire, the more air that leaves the car tire, the more the walls become weak and you don't have a lot of stiffness and that car tire gets really sloppy and it becomes tough to control the car. The same thing with the disc walls. As they delaminate and they separate, as you put pressure on them, they're less able to control the movement of the spine because they get a little sloppy and they're less able to buffer the forces of the compression that's placed on the spine. When the disc walls are delaminated, that can lead to a crack or an open fissure in the wall. Now, when you have a crack in the wall and you have unequal compressive force placed on the disc, now that compressive force can be submaximal, doesn't have to be maximal loading, the gel-like center gets forced out of the crack. Compressive force can be uneven on the disc when your spine is not in a neutral posture. 
because when your spine is not in a neutral posture, you have too much extension or flexion in the spine. That means you know, the spine, the joints are rotated one way or another, and that's putting too much force or pressure on one side of the disc or the other. Another way that can happen is in side bending. When you side bend, right, you have too much force placed on one side of the disc. So when you have unequal pressure, you have pressure being placed on this side of the disc, let's say, the center gel gets forced that way. If there's a crack, the gel leaks out the crack, you have an open fissure, you have a bulge, and you get pain and inflammation. Another way that the disc walls are not so effective at controlling compression is when you twist and rotate. As we said, because of the way the fibers are layered in the disc wall, they're layered diagonally like this against each other, right? So when you twist or rotate, half of those fibers are stiffening and half of those fibers are loosening. That means half the wall is not able to effectively buffer compressive force. So in the golf swing, all this happens. You have one-way rotation over and over again with compressive and shearing forces. You have side bending at the highest point of force. That's at the highest point of force is when you're delivering most uh, of that force at impact into the ball, you might not be in a neutral spine. Odds are you're not. That means you have too much extension or flexion. So you have too much force pressed on one side of the disc or the other. You've been doing this golf swing over and over and over again for years. You've been accumulating swings year after year, round after round, practice session after practice session. So the walls get delaminated, they weaken, a crack opens up, you have unequal force, and then you have the open fissure bulge, and you have pain and inflammation. But more than that, or not more than that, but as much as the pain and, and inflammation is a problem, so is the lack of support from that vertebral disc, because now we have that leaky tire effect. The walls have loosened, and they just can't really uh, control that movement. So at the point of the delamination, the, the disc that's delaminated or the, the, the disc or the joint that has the open fissure, you have less stiffness in the wall and you have more movement in that joint. Now when that happens, you're putting a lot of stress on the bony structures, on the ligaments, the tendons, and the muscles. And that will lead to the injuries that are so common in golf. Now in part four, we'll go over some of the basics regarding how to address these disc issues. At Golf Training Hacks, we not only want you to play better golf, but we want you to move better and feel better every day so you can play the best golf of your life for the rest of your life.